Ah! Hi everyone, I'm Alex. I'm Michaela. And welcome back to our channel. Today we're gonna have pretty interesting hardware review for you. So in the comments many of you asked where I am, where I disappeared. Um, I had a serious medical condition that appeared to be life threatening, but after operation I feel much better. So I will appear much more on the, our videos. So let's go for the interesting part with the weird device. Come. So, it is a long established fact that no matter what Soviets were trying to assemble, it's always possible to turn it to a Kalashnikov. So, in uh, all this uh, Soviet production of computers, there were two really bright spots. One of them was Czechoslovak Tesla. Uh, well, uh, it's from <laughs> her country, so it's understandable. And the second one was uh, Fab Robotron from the German Democratic Republic. And I must say that uh, computers made from, from Robotron, they look at very often pretty Western, yeah, because uh, they introduce an entire ecosystem of machines with a good design, uh, often really good engineering, and they all intercompatible, and they were pretty amazing. Uh, moreover, in, in Chernobyl zone, there was a uh, very widely used uh, Robotron 1715, uh, a computer which uh, we still can find across uh, neglected facilities. Uh, but I have to say that in search of that Robotron 1715, we got another Robotron machine, which is called Robotron SM1910. And I must say that that thing is probably the most over-engineered computer I ever have seen. So, uh, like, uh, that's how it looks like. And we all try to look inside and consider whether it's worth further restoration. Before we continue, like this video and subscribe to our channel. And for those who want much more, join us on our Patreon page, where you will find a lot of bonus content from the Computers of Chernobyl series and a lot of insights to the Chernobyl zone. Link is in the description below. The computer has 512 kilobytes of RAM and is based on Intel 8086 with a coprocessor. Well, when we unpacked it, we found that the previous owner actually left us such a joke with this sticker. Well, technically he's correct, Intel is inside. An overall condition of this particular machine is pretty far from good, because plastic parts already yellowed over the time, including this amazing keyboard. And also, the decorative panels on the sides are missing, and there is some rust on various places. And well, apart from that front panel, everything is made from a thick metal, so overall weight of this is kind of 25 kilograms. Uh, similar to what we have seen in our channel before, the computer is crate based, and it's densely packed with boards, which we will review later in details. Well, and here starts a little bit strange things, because here is the strange wiring on the back, and a few cables basically come from inside the computer to be plugged back to some of the socket boards. And as you can see, there are no free expansion slots, everything is packed pretty densely. Well, if you know why it was made like this with this wiring, just let us know in the comments. If we remove the upper cover, it becomes visible how little free space is available inside. And also what is visible that the computer has three power supplies. One main 5 volts on the back to power the crate, then a standby power supply and also a front panel power supply, uh, both of them are located at the front. So that front panel power supply allowed to control all of this and also to turn the computer remotely via the modem call. To that panel comes that strange ribbon cable that is plugged into the processor board from outside. And uh, also, of course, here is a hard drive and two floppy disk drives for 5-inch floppy disks. Well, looks complex, right? So, the same is actually with other components. And by the way, meanwhile I decided to clean up and restore the keyboard. Uh, and even here you can see how many parts are inside it. There will be a separate video about retrobriting it and restoration, so do not forget to subscribe. The keyboard, by the way, will be switched by a computer into the proper mode of operation on boot up, because it would detect which operation system is being used. So, let's disconnect everything and take a closer look to the crate. The boards do not have knobs, 
like DVK or YES computers that you could see in our previous videos, just hard handles, but nevertheless, it is easy to pull them out. And here we go. Okay, so this is the graphic card. Pretty, you know, monstrously built. In fact, there are kind of, you know, two boards uh, which are interconnected in the middle. I don't know if it's visible, but uh, there is uh, this connector and, uh, you know, I will not risk to dismantle it, especially given that uh, here are pretty many uh, such pin wires added. It looks really, really complex. Uh, as far as I know, I might be wrong if, uh, if I'm wrong, please correct, uh, that uh, despite it has this uh, a nine pin connector in reality it is compatible only with the robotron displays uh, we have somewhere this robotron display it's a monochrome green uh, but it uses some very interesting frequency no matter to what i connected it before it really didn't work so uh, such a thing mm, let's continue our tear down the next one is so-called kgs board which is a controller of a graphic subsystem uh, here we could connect a Robotron graphic tablet via V24 interface and also a keyboard via the IFSS. And if you paid attention, you surely noticed that, that exactly to this board were connected to cables that came back inside to the computer. In fact, they end up with two connectors on the side of the machine. Well, I really have no idea why it was made this way. Uh, it saved it literally 15 centimeters of the length of the cable. Uh, but write us in the comments if you have any idea, because for us it really looks strange. Okay, let's pull out the next boards. Okay, they are fixed via screws, so first we have to remove them. I will also remove this ribbon cable so it doesn't make any obstacles. Uh, well, it's shaped in pretty interesting way uh, when passes this front power supply. And there is even one more connector that actually comes to the front panel. So this is what it looks like when removed. Okay, the next is a KES board, which is a controller for the external storage, hard disk, floppy drives, or a streamer. The next one is one of RAM boards. Uh, there are two of them in here, and we'll take a closer look on them a little bit later. But for now, we come to the ZRE, the CPU board, which is at the same time provided as Centronix and IFFS interface connectors. Uh, this connector in the middle is for that ribbon cable that comes to the front panel we talked before about. The processor pair used here is original Intel, uh, the CPU made by Siemens, by Intel license, and the coprocessor is original Intel. And they hardly solder it on this microboard, which is a plugged on a, a main board via connector below. However, for BIOS chips, a hard solder to the board, uh, so, you know, if something, there may be a trouble with refreshing them. And now, let's look to the RAM, which is formed by two 256 kilobytes boards. What is notable, there are a lot of wire connections between the chips, but there is one more strange thing. So, uh, we have here RAM. Uh, it's very beautiful, you can see the elegance of it, uh, it's nicely welded, um, but here is a thing I don't understand really much. Here you can see a connector, but unfortunately it doesn't have a hole, there is nothing. And if you have any kind of information about it, please write me in the comments, I would really much appreciate it, thanks. And the last comes this ASP board, which is a controller of serial and parallel interfaces. There are connectors for V24, IFSS, and IFSSP. And now we finally can see the crate from inside. Uh, some boards uh, take two connectors, some only one. And here is a little bit suspicious place. Uh, you know, look, we will have some more discoveries soon. I have such a feeling. And on the side, there is such a fluffy filter, because from the opposite side, there is a very powerful fan. You know, what drives a bit crazy in this computer, that to access something, you really need to remove 
another something and then you discover that the last screw is under something and that something also has to be removed. And often it's really not obvious here. Uh, you know, this is the case for this very fun. First you should take out this panel. And then you have to take one more screw out, uh, which you can't access until you remove one more part, or actually two parts. Well, by the shape of the panel I see the previous owners didn't figure out where it was holding. Well, now we can see the fun and needless to say it also has a mount that holds it on the place, so we needed to remove it. And the funds actually here were pretty interesting because they had the um, speed monitoring and basically if one of them uh, didn't start at the, or the speed monitor was just dusty, the computer would switch itself off after 6 seconds and then a yellow signal LED will flash at the front panel. And after this, we decided to take a look to the power supplies. You know, we expected we will need to remove just a few screws. That was a terrible misconception, because dismantling any of them appeared to be something like this. Well, after spending nearly 20 minutes, I eventually didn't figure out how to do it. So instead, uh, let's forget about that and let's look deeper behind the crate. Uh, here should be one more fun, which is missing in this very computer, and next we need to remove the floppy and hard disk drives, which of course will require a few more metal parts dismantled. The floppy drives here are K5601, in reality, they are pretty good, I had in the past the same uh, type on one of our YES machines. And uh, on the drive itself, on its boards, uh, it's real mixture of Soviet and foreign chips. Uh, for example, these planar ones are from the TIG. Well, with the hard drive, it's way more troublesome, because it all packed so densely that to access it connectors is possible only using a screwdriver to lose them a little bit. And then you need to make multiple small moves with fingers to release them completely. So in reality it's really easy to scratch yourself. Alright, success! The hard drive here is K5504.20, which means it has a 20 MB capacity. Uh, there could be also a 50 megabyte version. And then, once all of this has been removed, this is what we found. Just to look at this wiring. This is ridiculous. I remember some people wrote in the comments under the episode about ES 1841 that that machine had made uh, you know, with a zero idea of ergonomics or usability. A look at this. This is insane. But the next surprise was that there were actually a few more boards below, which are from the opposite side of the crate. So to remove them is necessary to remove an entire front panel. Once we did it, it revealed a little but densely packed front controls board, to which a ribbon cable from the CPU board has been connected. 
Behind the panel there are two power supplies and what I found a little bit strange uh, that their fuses are also accessible only if you remove this panel. Okay, so let's remove these ribbon cables and pull out the boards. In reality there are just two of them and both are drive controllers. Technically we dismantled around, you know, 75% of the computer and we had to stop because we ran out of a free space. Just look at this. How many parts are in it? Did you see anything similar? Please write me in the comments. So that's it. I hope you like it. Uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. For more information, join our Patreon. There is always something more, so maybe interesting. Yeah. See you next time. Bye.